guys, welcome back to the channel Nate's Pink Bookshelf. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel, and I post new videos once a week all about book-related things. I know it's been a minute since I've put a, posted a video. I'm not sure if it's been three, four, or five months maybe. But yeah, I always come back, make a video, and then say I'm going to come back, but then I just like take a break. I don't know why, but I've decided one video a week will work best for me. I may post two, but I'm going to stick to at least minimum having one video up a week on either a book review, book haul, whatever the case may be. But this is going to be a cumulative book haul from, I'm going to say, October 2018 to January 2019. I'm going to combine all of my February and March books for a March book haul. I have all the books here on my cart ready to go for March. So, yeah. But um, we're just going to dive into this because I don't want this video to be super long. I have a mix of books. Of course, I have my lovely Dollar Tree books, obviously. I have some books that I purchased myself, some ARCs, some review books, things of that manner. So let's just dive into this haul. I'm going to start off with the two books that were purchased for me by my son's father, who is my fiancé. And um, the first being The Emotionally Healthy Leader by Peter Scazzarell. This is a book that I am actually reading for my church. Ministry leaders are required to read this. We're required to read one chapter a month, and then we discuss it and um, just kind of do like a... a a mental and emotional health check if you will just so that we are on the same page and that way we can see where everyone is because as ministry leaders we want to lead the church with a certain mindset and not with um an emotional deficit so that's what this book is really about it's just being emotionally healthy and leading your church in the right way and it doesn't have to come you know pertain to you being in a church it can just pertain to you being in work or whatever but um yeah this is a really good book so far i am only what two chapters in <laughs> I think I'm two chapters in, and I need to catch up on, like, one or two more chapters, so good book so far. The next book was also a gift from my fiancé, and um, this is a book that I really, really wanted, so he asked me if I wanted it. I said, yeah, I was going to purchase it myself, but then he offered to get it for me, and he did, and I love it so much. I haven't read it yet. I have the audiobook on my phone just waiting to go. I'm determined to get to this book next month, but it is Becoming by Michelle Obama. I am in love with everything about this book. The cover is gorgeous. The coloring is gorgeous. Her photo is gorgeous. I just, I love it. I am in awe of Michelle Obama. She is just a very inspirational, motivational woman i love all that she stands for and um i'm excited to read her memoir i really love the photos thrown in here of like her and barack and then her and her kids here so like i'm excited to really dive into this and read her story and pick up some things from her this next book was a book that I found at Rite Aid because my local Rite Aid sells really good books, but they're all like mass market paperbacks. And I don't have a problem with mass market paper paperback books as long as they're not, not like super thick. I don't like those gigantic ones. But um, yeah, this is from Jenna Showalter and it's Shadow and Ice. Sorry, Shadow and Ice. This is the first book in the Gods of War. This is a kind of paranormal fantasy romance, if you will. And I absolutely adore Jenna Showalter. Jenna Showalter. I love her YA um, Alice and Zombieland series. I love her adult series. What is it called? Oh my god. One of the books in the series is called The Darkest Touch. I think it's The Lords of the Underworld or something like that. I love that that series. So um, I decided to grab this because I saw it was only 8 bucks. Why not? And I just, I love the holographic feel to it. If you guys can see, I'm not sure if you can tell. But um, I don't know much about this. I've heard mixed reviews about it. I got it just because I do love Jenna Shaw also in her writing. I haven't gone wrong with any of her books so far. So I'm excited to see what this is about, especially since it's the first in a new series. And I think this series came out last year. But yeah. The next four books I picked up while I was away on the retreat that we had from our church. The ministers did a kind of ministerial alliance retreat and where we stayed at, they had books on sale for $5 and I went gung-ho crazy. Um, not really. Only about five books. But um, four of those books are a part of a series and if I'm not mistaken, it's a YA kind of fantasy series that is based off of um christian aspects and the author is ted decker the series is called the lost books i have books two three um four and six so i'm missing book one and i'm missing book five because they didn't have it there but book two is called infidel book three is renegade book four is chaos book six is elion i think that's how you say that elion um, don't quote me on that, but I believe that's how you say that. Again, I don't know much about it. I just know that it is a Christian fiction fantasy novel, and I'm trying to get into more Christian fiction that's more on the fantasy side, because I am a fan of fantasy, if you can't tell from myself. I love fantasy. Fantasy is, like, my favorite genre, specifically paranormal romances. 
love those but I am getting more into Christian books um, as far as Christian fiction goes and I've read maybe two or three Christian fantasy novels so far love them so I need some more so I got those moving on to arcs now these are copies that were sent to me for review for free so this first arc um, for some reason they sent me an arc in a finished copy so I'm like so stoked about it so I have the bag of Chandler by David Rawlings this is a Christian fiction I believe it's speculative fantasy don't quote me on that but um pretty much what i know about this is a three of people david gillian or jillian and michael they each take the wrong suitcase from baggage claim they basically have to go to the baggage handler to get their like their baggage switched back to the right baggage but while they're there they're learning some things about themselves and pretty much it says it's a modern day parable about the burdens that weigh us down um david rowling's issues and inspire an invitation to lighten the load so it's very inspirational, motivational, kind of fictional read. I'm going to read this. And again, I also have a finished copy of that. So I have an art copy and a finished copy. And the doorbell just rung and I have a package. So give me a second. Okay, so the next book is going to be a Christian fiction as well. But it's more on the thriller, I believe, sci-fi kind of um, scheme. This is by Travis Thrasher and it is American Omens. I got an arc of this. I have yet to read it. I heard it's pretty good. I'm interested to see what it's about. I'm not really much of a thriller person. I don't really care to read mysteries and thrillers. But since they sent me a copy of this, I figured why not. They did send me two art copies, one to give away and one for myself. So I do have a second one that I'm doing a giveaway for soon. But um, yeah, I'm excited to dive into this and I really, really love the colors on the cover. Okay, the next few arcs are all arcs that I've already read, obviously, because they were for, like, reviews and blog tours and stuff like that. The first one I have here is The Disasters by PC Cass and Kirsten Cass. This is the first book in the new trilogy, I believe. It's going to be a trilogy, and um, it's more of a YA kind of fantasy supernatural. I pretty much enjoyed it. I love the arc, first of all. Um, I didn't really write too much in this arc, but I just love that this arc includes photos. There are illustrations in here, and I was so excited when I got this because I was able to um, read and just look at how the characters really are like portrayed. The artwork in here is really, really nice. Um, basically, it's just about some teenagers that have supernatural powers. They control the elements and things like that. that that's pretty much what it's about. I enjoyed it. Um, I think I'll give it a 4 stars or 5 stars or 4.5. I'll put it on the screen exactly because I don't remember, but um, the artwork in here, stunning. I definitely think this is a great kind of first book in a series. It is fast-paced. I feel like there could have been more development as far as the plot goes, but considering this is the first book, I, I think I gave it a 4 or 4.5. Um, I'm excited to see how this continues on because there are some other kids that have powers and things like that, so we'll see. The next arc was one that I was so stoked about, you guys, like, stoked, because, first of all, this is a massive, massive book. Um, this book, I think, was, like, almost 600 pages long, and it was supposed to be, like, the epic fantasy debut of 2019. A lot of people have read it. There are mixed reviews out about it. I personally enjoyed it, though it is a tougher kind of YA fantasy read, um, but that is going to be The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. This was amazing to me. I gave it five stars. It definitely is a very difficult read um, because it is very much told in two different perspectives based on the same character. So the main character himself is telling his story and then there's another character who's telling his story as well. But she's telling his story from like the very beginning of time and he's telling his story from like a halfway point. And then they're alternating back and forth between telling his story and her story of him. And then at the end, it all kind of collides together to make sense. It's a very difficult read, but I had so much fun. I marked it up. I, I had so much fun with this book. Um, I definitely want to get a hardcover of this. I've seen it at Barnes & Nobles. I just haven't picked it up yet. But I definitely want to get a hardcover of this because I absolutely enjoyed, enjoyed it. I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, Kyron is just an amazing character. I love everything about him. And he can sing. And he's bad. Like... He, he, could, he could do some damage to some people. Um, and just his family in general is a hot mess. Um, there's definitely political drama, of course, in this. And um, a lot of secrets told. Uh, not told, but a lot of secrets that are, like, hidden. And um, a lot of things said. And I'm just excited to see where this goes after this. It is massive. Some people have compared this to Game of Thrones. I personally don't care for Game of Thrones. I've tried Game of Thrones. I've tried reading the 
the um what is it the graphic novel i've tried watching the show i haven't read the book yet so i'm gonna try reading the book but as far as like the show and the graphic novel i just i can't do it with I can't do Game of Thrones, but I don't know if this reading this was like Game of Thrones and I'll probably try to read Game of Thrones, but I adored this so much. Sorry about the glare, you guys. I'm trying to work out this ring light situation, but um, I adore this. I gave it five stars. I loved it. I can't wait for the second one to come out. This uh, dragons, just everything. Just yeah. Mm -hmm. Loved it. The last few are all going to be Christian fiction novels. Um, Again, I've been on a Christian fiction kick lately. So this one, I'm not, okay, so it's classified as Christian fiction, but it's really like contemporary, western kind of romance, but it's clean romance, so I don't really know, it's like in between, but it's called Healing Hearts, this is the second book in the, ooh, what is it, the Sheriffs, the Sheriffs of Savage Wales, if I'm not mistaken, that is the series, or is the series called Savage Wales, I think the series is called The Savage Wales, but the first book is called The Sheriffs of Savage, Savage Wells. I haven't read the first book. Definitely want to read it because the two characters in there were awesome when I read the sequel. But um, this one is called Healing Hearts and it is about a man named, oh my god, what is his name? Gideon McNamara and a woman named Miriam. Basically, Gideon wants to get married. Um, so he does for, he calls in for a mail order bride is what it's called. And, um... He basically says that he wants a woman with nursing experience, but the agency he went to did not tell Miriam that she was going to Savage Wells to get married, but for a nursing job. So when she got off the wagon, she basically didn't realize she was at her own wedding, and when she realized she was at her wedding, she ran out the wedding. The entire town pretty much hated her, but um, Gideon gave her a job since he felt bad anyway. And there's just a cute little romance that brews between the two of them. So the two of them basically get to know each other. Um, there are some secrets. There is some drama as far as uh, Miriam is concerned with her past and her having like mental health issues. But I enjoyed this so much. It was very comical. It was very sweet. I love the um, marriage advice in this. I absolutely enjoyed this. I think I gave it five stars. I think I did. The next one is a new to me author. Um, she's not really new to me because I literally own all of her books on ebook, but I have not read any of them. So I'm going to say she's a new to me author. And I did receive an arc for the ninth book in the Hagenheim series, I think it's called. And it is The Warrior Maiden by Melanie Dickerson. And this is a YA fantasy kind of retelling of Mulan. Totally love this. Gave it five stars. This is a retelling of Mulan with Christian aspects and takes place more so in, I think, somewhere in Europe. Britain or something like that. It deals with the Polish people and all that, but it's really, really good. I absolutely enjoyed it. The romance was so perfect because it wasn't like in your face. There really wasn't any kissing until like the last chapter or so. I loved it. I love Mulan in general as like a, a Disney movie. I, I love it so much. Um, I can't wait for the live action movie to come out, but I adored this. It was amazing and it made me want to continue reading the rest of her books her adult and her YA books so I'm definitely going to be doing that soon but um yeah great read loved it so much the next one is called Blessed the Prodigal Daughter this is the first book in the Blessed series I'm not sure if it's going to be a trilogy or a series but it's called The Prodigal Daughter this one is another Christian fiction it's more of a thriller horror kind of supernatural um read it was interesting and four stars it was very interesting I don't really know how to describe it um but there's just basically a girl with powers, and she basically had a really tough time. Um, I mean, the beginning, like, the introduction is very gruesome. Like, very gruesome to the point where she's, like, stabbed up, cut up, beat up, earlobe drooping. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, definitely, if, if you're not into, like, the gruesome kind of writing, don't read this. I wouldn't recommend it, but I did enjoy it nonetheless um, because it was very intricate. And um, there were Christian aspects to this and there were scriptures involved in this. So I did enjoy it myself personally. So I probably will be purchasing a um, finished copy of it. And I just love the arc cover of it. I'm not sure if you guys can see like her hair. Sorry about the glare. But um, yeah, I enjoyed this book. The last arc that I have is one that I was like so stoked about. Um, I ended up getting two arcs. I gave one arc away because um, the author personally sent me an arc. And then the publishing company personally sent me an arc because I work with this publishing company, um, but it's A Fire and Lines by Misu Andrews, you guys, I love this, gave it five stars, this is a biblical fiction story based on the book of Daniel, the complete book of Daniel, so it goes through the story of Daniel, and, um, it tells the story of Daniel from the perspective of his wife, um, if he would have had a wife, and I loved it so much, there was so many cute romances, so much drama, so many secrets, 
just people back in those times, the biblical era, definitely had some issues going on. And I loved every aspect of this. I loved seeing the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come to life with the fiery furnace. And I also loved the whole lion's den um, scene coming to life in this book. It was just really amazing. And the romance as well was amazing. Misu really does romances really well between biblical characters. Um, she leaves them as close to the biblical text as possible but she still builds a fictional kind of realm around the story so i enjoyed it all the way definitely would recommend this okay so the next books are also review copies but they're not arcs they're all finished um and four of those are going to be from bethany house because i love bethany house i love working with them so the first two are going to be on the kind of romantic suspense side i am not a suspense person it's up there with thriller and horror for me but i decided i wanted to at least broaden my horizons in the christian realm um because i know in the secular kind of uh, realm i don't care for the thrillers i just don't so i figured i would like them most more if i read them like christian fictions so this first one is called the curse of misty wayfair by jamie joe wright and this sounds really interesting it has to do with a ghost an asylum and two different women two different women from two different decades and um their mothers so that's all i know that's all i want to know and i'm going to keep it at that there's a the next one i'm super excited about because it involves the bau and i love criminal minds i love law and order i like those kind of like shows and stuff so i was super excited this one is called mind games it is the first book in the kylie quinn profiler series um and it's by nancy mihel mihel i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right if you guys can see that but um yeah so basically uh there is a serial killer coming out killing people randomly um leaving poems and it all leads up to the profiler kaylee and there is also a special agent named noah hunter so there's a little bit of romance a lot of drama and something to do with kaylee and the serial killer so i'm excited to dive into this i don't want to know much about it i want to go in blind because I'm, like i said i'm not really into romantic suspense novels a lot unless it's like a paranormal romantic suspense but this is more so thriller mystery so we'll see the last two are also from genres I don't really care for, um, and they're both historical historical fiction romances. Um, I don't mind historical fiction that's more so biblical fiction because I enjoy reading um, books set in the time of the Bible era based around Bible um, people, like the biblical people, but like straight up historical fiction is not my thing. I don't care for history personally. I, I never cared. I never passed history. Like I, I disliked history. Um, but I decided to give it a go because the covers were both gorgeous. So this one is called Between Two Shores by Jocelyn Green. This is gorgeous. I love this cover. It's just everything about it is really pretty. The covers, the colors are just stunning. But um, on the back it says, The daughter of a Mohawk mother and a French father in 1759 Montreal, Catherine Duval rather remained neutral in a world tearing, herself, tearing itself apart. Content to trade with both the French and the British, Catherine is pulled into seven years of war against her wishes when her British ex-fiancé Samuel Crane is taken prisoner by her father. Samuel claims he has information that could help in the war and he asks Catherine to help him escape. So it's to do with Catherine and her ex-fiancé Samuel and I'm guessing they're going to escape. They're going to go to like some other side because it says between two shores so they're going to go somewhere else and I guess their romance is going to brew back up. I'm not sure. It sounds really interesting. I'm excited to dive into this. The next one I have also from Bethany is called Far Side of the Sea by Kate Breesland. This is a new author to me, um, and I heard really great things about her first book because this follows, I guess, the same character, Lieutenant Colin Mayberry. This takes place in 1918 in England, and yeah, you got M18 or MI8, I think it is, and there's a girl named Jewel Ryer. It's to do with Paris and spies and espionage and it sounds amazing. So I figured why not? I do like spy novels. I do. Um, I just don't read them often. So I figured why not read one that's historical fiction. So yeah. And the last review copy that I have here is one that I'm like stoked about. I love working with this company. Um, I've noticed that I've been enjoying a lot of their books. But this one is a YA kind of contemporary. It's called Waiting for Fit. This is written by Spencer Hyde. First of all, this cover... Do you see the colors? And I'm sorry about the noise if you guys hear that they're mowing outside. But the colors are gorgeous. I just wish that this was actually gold foil and not just like a mustard yellow. But this is a YA contemporary that is about mental health uh, issues. And you have people with OCD. You have people with um, auditory hallucinations. You have people with Tourette's. You have people with... Uh, I don't even know what the other problems were in here. Let me see if I can find...
I don't know where that thing is, but basically, it really dives into mental health issues, but it tells it from a very different perspective. A lot of the times when you read YA contemporary novels that deal with mental health, they basically all have like the same kind of premise. Um, the, the characters all have like the same kind of triggers and same rituals and things like that. But this book, however, really goes towards a different aspect in it, in that um, it lets you know that just because someone two um okay basically just because um two of the same people may have OCD it doesn't mean that they have the same triggers the same rituals the same routines the same mindset um OCD is very much as different as the skin tone and everybody's color if that makes sense um so i really enjoyed this i love the female character and i can't remember her name right now Addie Addie and Fitz yes oh my god Addie is very very much snarky and cute Fitz is very comical, especially since he has auditory hallucinations, and Addie has major problems with OCD. She knows she needs help, but she doesn't want to ask for the help, so her mother basically put her in a program within a hospital to get help. And, um, yeah, it's just so cute. I love the romance in this. It is so freaking sweet and adorable. It kind of gives me the Fault in Our Stars vibe without the dying. Um, and I adored it so much. I'm definitely going to be rereading this. I did mark it up, um, quite a bit. I didn't um tab it however but i did like underline things i'm trying to find a page but let's see if i could find a page where i underline some stuff because like there are so many cute moments and quotes and things like this so i definitely think for a first read this underlining was great and i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna reread so here's like a page if you guys can see where i like underline things and stuff um lots of funny moments with fitz fitz is very much a comical character I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that yellow, but um, Fitz was very comical. Addie was so freaking amazing. Um, definitely want to reread this and annotate with like little mini illustrations and um, a lot more notes. Um, definitely want to reread this again. Okay, so on to Dollar Tree books. And I mean, what kind of haul would this be without my Dollar Tree books? I love Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree sometimes has some really great finds. I encourage everyone, if you have a Dollar Tree by you, just check out the book section. You will actually be shocked by what you find. I have found some really cool gems every now and then. So I have a few here to share with you guys. The first one is by Gail Carragher. This is Curtis and Conspiracies. It's book two in the finishing school. I own all of her books. I own ebook. I have not read any of them. I want to. I started listening to uh what is it? Etiquette and Espionage. I started listening to it on Libby um slash Overdrive, which is like my library's uh kind of audiobook thing. But I never finished it, um, and it was quite interesting. All that I know that is that this is a YA steampunk paranormal. It deals with supernatural beings and a finishing school that teaches you... Um, I, get, I don't know if it's magic that they teach or just um, killing. It says, the sequel to Etiquette and Espionage, classes back in session with more petticoats and poisons, tea, tea trays and treason, Gail characters. Gail Carriker's distinctive voice, signature human, and lush steampunk setting are sure to be the height of fashion this season. So, I'm not sure if there's spies or anything like that, but yeah, fashion, Paris. I'm saying Paris, but I'm not sure it's set in Paris, but fashion, killing, supernatural beings, why not? The next two are going to be Paranormal Romances. This one is by Shelley Lawrenson. This is called Bite Me. It's part of her Pride series. Um, and all that I know is that this is about a hybrid tiger or grizzly tiger or something like that. He's like half tiger, half bear. I don't know. But do you guys see that cover? Do you see them blue eyes? Stunning, 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 stunning. And um, I'm not sure what book this is in the series, but it's Paranormal Romance, and I'm a sucker for Paranormal Romance, so why not? The next book is by Rebecca Zanetti. I have found two books from her. Um, I own a lot of her books on ebook. Again, another author I own a lot of, have yet to read, but this one is called Provoked. It is a part of the Lyrical High Note series, and it says she's got him right where she wants him. All that I know is that this is paranormal and it deals with music. Um, yeah, vampires. Yeah, paranormal romance with vampires and music. That's all I know, and the cover is honestly what sold me. The orange color with his abs, I mean, why not? 
Next, we have one from Garth Nix, which is an author I've heard a lot about. I do own Sabriel, I think it is, yes. Sabriel, right here. Um, I have yet read, read to read it. Um, is, yeah, I have so many books I have yet to read. But, um, yeah, I found this one. This is a YA fantasy, if I'm not mistaken. And it's called Newt Emeralds. Um, it says Magic Maids and Masquerades. So, this one follows, what is her name? Lady Truthful, which they nicknamed Newt. And basically, on her 18th birthday, she inherits the treasure, which is the Newtonton Emerald, and it just it gives the, the, the wearer magical powers. That's all I know. Evil sorcerers and disguises and dressing up as a man with a mustache. Yeah, it sounds interesting. I, I want to read it, and the cover is what sold me on it. I saw the Dollar Tree, I saw the author's name, I knew who he was, and the cover just looked stunning. I didn't even read it until I like after I paid for it and realized I would enjoy it um so yeah the cover itself is what sold me on this nothing else this last book was kind of like a cover by honestly um it caught my attention and then when I saw who blurbed it on the back I was excited so it's called Undertow by Michael Buckley this is a YA fantasy um or paranormal rather and I picked it up because first of all the cover itself is gorgeous. I loved it. The colors. Then I looked on the back to see who blurbed it. And, you know, I see that um, E. Lockhart blurbed it, which is great. You know, she wrote We Were Liars. Um, but then the second blurb was by A.G. Howard. And I am a huge fan of A.G. Howard. I have read her Splinter Trilogy. I absolutely loved it. I need to purchase the physical copies of that series because I loved it so much. She, do have, she does have other books out and other series out. I have yet to read. I, they're on, like, my TBR. I need to bump them up. But, um, yeah, she blurbed it. And I said, you know what, why not? I love her, I trust her, and the cover was gorgeous. Didn't know what this was until I got home and realized it was a YA um, paranormal. And, um, yeah, it takes place in Coney Island, and I, I'm from New York. I love going to Coney Island. Coney Island. Coney Island. <laughs> so, um, yeah. That, that's really all I know about it. Um, it says, Lyric Walker's life forever changes the night she witnesses the arrival of the Alpha or First Men. The world's initial wonder and awe over the new race quickly turned into paranoia, paranoia and fear, transforming her hometown of Coney Island into a military zone with violence bubbling just beneath the surface. Um, so yeah, that just sounded really good. I don't know if it's going to be like vampires or werewolves or whatever the case may be, but the end pages on this book, gorgeous. But yeah, there was no other reason why I purchased it. And again, the reason why I like Dollar Tree is because this book was $19. It retails for $19. You guys can see, $19, $18.99. I only paid a dollar. So if you definitely have a local Dollar Tree, I suggest check them out. Um, check as many as you want out. You never know what you'll find. I know some people that live in like the Atlanta era that they, they have found um, Morgan Rhodes books before. And, um, you know, you never know what kind of author you'll find. Just go check it out yourself. I have found some really awesome fantasy novels, like, before at local Dollar Trees, and it's just amazing. So, that is it for this haul, you guys. Four months of books. Again, these are not all the books, just the ones that I really wanted to show you from October to January. Again, I have way more books, but I'm going to add those into, like, a separate video. Um, I'm going to do a kind of February-March book haul and then I'm going to do a thrift books book haul because I have quite a lot of books from thrift books. I also have a book of the month club book haul coming. I have made three, I think three different purchases. One, two, three, four different purchases with book of the month if I'm not mistaken um, because I have multiple emails. I wanted to try them out. Um, I think I'm going to stick with them depending on the books that they are going to be offering. The next month um but we'll see but yeah that's it for this haul if you have any questions comments or concerns just leave them down below i will have more videos coming really soon tag videos i'm probably not gonna do a bookshelf uh, tour until i move just because all of my books do not fit on this one shelf i have another shelf over there and then i have a tub with books and i just i have way too many books to try to show you guys so yeah, I'm going to come back to do monthly wrap-up videos and monthly TBRs and things like that, book reviews. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!